The observant amongst you will have noticed that I'm not Vanessa, who is due to start this presentation, who unfortunately is unwell today. So I'm just going to present a few slides that Vanessa uh, was going to present. You'll have also noticed our fourth member is not visible. Um, he is, he's uh, online. Uh, Paul Wilkinson is online. He's recorded his presentation, but he'll be available for questions online at the end of the presentation. Okay, so I shall just begin with an overview of the UK Geoenergy Observatory in Glasgow. And really, um, it echoes some of the comments that Zoe made in terms of this is a, a doing facility. This is a, a real facility in the ground in Glasgow. We're doing research, development, innovation. It's a place where you can go measure, quantify, try and experiment. And um, there are two images on this slide of where the observatory is located on the left hand side. You can see it, it's in a, an urban area. It's an area of um, urban regeneration, post-industrial legacy. So it's very typical of many towns and cities across the UK. And on the right hand side, um, a photograph of one of the research compounds, the fence research compounds, where in most of those compounds there are three boreholes um, down to different depths. I'll show those in a moment. But there's a lot of monitoring infrastructure that you can see on that diagram, which um, I'll also explain in a moment. And you can see there a heat center and a heat pump chiller in white. So the observatory in Glasgow is um, to look at mine water geothermal, and that's both heating and thermal storage. Um, altogether, there are 12 boreholes that have been drilled between uh, 2018 and 2020, the boreholes were drilled. And then since then, uh, geothermal infrastructure has been installed. The boreholes go down to two levels of mine working. You can see on the diagram, one called the Glasgow Upper and one called the Glasgow Main. The upper seam is at about 50 metres down, the Glasgow Main's about um, 85 metres down. And then similarly, there are different depths of monitoring boreholes into the shallow superficial deposits, into the bedrock, and a seismic monitoring borehole, which is deeper at 199 metres. And all these boreholes are unusually instrumented in that they're much more instrumented than you would have on average. And that allows us to really measure and quantify temperature, pressure, and so on in the subsurface um, as a baseline. And then when we do geothermal uh, work. So the next picture is a picture of the geothermal infrastructure. So it's a schematic diagram. And really the highlight here is that we can use this system in a number of different flexible combinations by either taking heat out of the subsurface so as you would do on a cold day, or putting heat back into the subsurface for thermal storage, such as you might do in the summer on a warm day. So there are four boreholes that are connected up to a series of pipework that go into a heat center, which has got heat exchangers, which is linked to a heat pump chiller. And Andres and Paul are going to discuss results of some of the initial commissioning work that we've done, looking at what happens when you induce change through thermal changes in the subsurface using this infrastructure. And the boreholes, particularly, it's important to understand, can be done in different combinations within the same line working or across different depths of line working. And finally, there's an awful lot of open data that's already available, the baseline data, um, is available on uh, a page from the UK Geos website where there are things like all the drilling data and the geology, a lot of groundwater data. There's also on the right hand side of this slide, a lot of the time series data is increasingly becoming available um, through a page on the, the BGS website uh, for sensor data or you can get that data via um, an API for the sensor data. So that time series data is also available. 